coding made easy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to your next C plus plus Lego Five platformer tutorial. And this tutorial, we will be working on our tile collision. So, what we're going to do to start off with the bat, uh, we're going to create a brand new class, and we're going to call it Float Rec. Oh, I spelled that wrong. So I'm going to, have to change it in my source files. Just give me a second. I know you can't see this, but uh, sometimes I'm a bit of, uh, of a perfectionist when it comes to like coding, like naming and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I got a fix for the most part. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a float rect that takes in four parameters. So it takes in uh, x, float y, float width, and float height. Okay. And we're going to have four constant public variables. So we're going to have left, right, top, and bottom. And we're making them constant is because... We want them to be public for everybody to access them and sorry they should be float we want everybody to be able to access them but we don't want them to be we don't want, want anybody to change their values so in reality we want them just to be read only and we don't want to be able to write any values to it so now if we look at this right here we are going to um okay so anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to create our constructor and the constructor that we've created. So we're going to take in an X, a Y, a width, and a height. Okay. So now we're going to use the colon and what we're going to do is we're going to say left is equal to X, right is equal to X plus width, and we'll say top is equal to y and we'll say bottom is equal to y plus h now the reason why we have to do it like this is because they're constants so we have to do it on initialization or therefore we won't be able to do change the values for them so that's all we have to do um, we set the values and what we're going to have in here as well is we're going to have a function called intersects or a method called intersects and it's gonna take a float rect instance and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it just like bounding box collision so we or sorry this should be of type bool so we'll say bool float rect intersects and we take a float rect instance so we'll, we'll say that if right is less than f dot left or left is greater than f dot right or top is greater than f dot bottom or bottom is less than f dot top then there is no collision and therefore we will just return false so they're not intersecting at all and else we will return true because that means that they are touching it. That means that the two rectangles are intersecting. And I'm not sure what this error is. Uh, let me just get rid of this. Okay. So now that we've got that set up, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our player class. So player.cpp and player.h so inside here we're going to include the float rect class and what we're going to do is we're going to take the position and we're going to make it public because it doesn't matter if we modify the position we, we're going to want to modify the position there's no point in making a get and a setter because that's just extra unnecessary code that we need. Might as well just make it public, right? We're not gonna 
do anything when we set it or anything when we get it we just need to be able to modify the values and therefore making it public makes sense and it won't affect the code if we change the position anyways so um so we we've got that there and we'll make another float rect instance and we'll make it a pointer okay and what we're going to do in I swear I opened player.cpp, but because I got to open it again. So in player.cpp, in the load content at the bottom, we'll just say that rect is equal to new float rect. And we'll set to position.first, position.second, and we'll say the width and the height. Okay? And uh, yeah, that's simple enough. So in our update function now, now we're going to say delete, uh, delete rect, and then we're going to set rect to our new instance. So we're going to always be doing the same thing. And what this is going to do is just set a kind of getting a rect, an invisible rectangle around the player. So every single time we loop, we're going to be setting a new rectangle around the player. And uh, that's all we really need for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to go to the tile class. And we're going to include player. And we're going to have to put it in the update function of this class, the layer class, and the map class. And make sure you have a reference to it because we will be modifying the player's values. So the one thing about C++ is that since we have two different files, a header file and whatever, um, minor modifications can be a hassle sometimes, but uh, it's not too big of a problem. So we have to modify in that as well. And in our map file, so in there, pass a player in there, and let's go to our map.h. And we'll place the player inside there. Okay, so we've we've got all our player instances in there, and what we want to do is go to our tile.cpp. Now, uh, let me check how much time we have. Okay, so let's see if we can get this done now. So now we're gonna make a float rect, and we'll call it tile rect, and it will be equal to the position of our tile. Oh, but that's one thing that we never did. So we need to go to the private section and make a pair for the position. And in here in the set content, we'll just set uh, the position equal to the position. And in here we can pass in the position. So position dot first, position dot second, and the width and the height of each tile. Okay, and what we're gonna do as well is we need to get the previous we need to get the previous rect for the player and you know what we can do that in the player class as well so what we're going to do is we're going to make another uh, pair called previous position and uh, we'll make another rect and this will be called previous rect or something like that okay so inside our player class, what we're going to do at the top of the update, we're going to say previous position is equal to position. So we want to get the position from our last frame. And down here, we're going to say our previous rect is equal to new float rect, previous position dot first, previous position dot second, and width and height. And we're going to make a call to delete first because if we don't delete them then they're gonna be stuck in memory and we're gonna get memory leaks so because we're deleting before we're creating again that's why we have to in our load content that's why we have to create an instance of it because if we don't create an instance of it and we just delete whatever then uh we're gonna have a problem and we'll just set pre previous rect equal to rect so we don't have to read all that out again so uh this should be fine and I think I'm gonna have to end this soon but anyways uh, if we continue in our tile.cpp so we have our tile rect so now we're going to say that if player dot 
rect intersects with the tau rect, then we have a collision, right? And if we have a collision, then we got to do a, um, some certain stuff with the collision. And I don't want to, it might take a while. It's not going to take too long to finish this off, but I think I'm going to split it up into a next tutorial. So I'm going to end it off here and then we'll finish it off in the next tutorial, which shouldn't be too long. So thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope you look forward to the next tutorial. So bye for now.